Hello Grade 10s, welcome to this lesson on electrostatic charge. Electrostatic charge can cause some weird and wonderful effects. It can be dangerous and it can be fascinating. We often observe the effects of electrostatic charge in our everyday lives. The word charge has many meanings in everyday language. What does charge mean in science? Let's join KK to find out. The study of electrostatics began hundreds of years ago. The person credited with the discovery of electrostatics was Thales the Milesian. He lived more than two and a half thousand years ago in the city of Miletus, which is now a part of Turkey, and he also studied in Egypt. It was while doing one of his experiments that he discovered that certain objects, when they were wrapped with wool or fur, seemed to gain a new property. He also noticed that if he rubbed amber for long enough, a small spark would jump between the amber and the wool that he used to rub it. Nowadays, we say that objects that have this property when they are rubbed become electrically charged. It is interesting to notice that the word electricity comes from this Greek word for amber. Unfortunately, very little scientific progress was made in the field of electricity after Thales made his discovery. And it was only in 1600 that a scientist called Walter Gilbert tried to explain what actually happens to amber when it's rubbed with wool. He called the attraction between rubbed or charged amber and other objects such as hair or bits of paper an electrical attraction. He suggested that there must be an electrical force field around the amber. In 1733, another scientist called C.F. Dufay showed that amber was not the only material that had electrical properties. He showed that when glass was rubbed with silk, the glass also seemed to become electrically charged. However, he noticed that the type of charge that glass stored was different to the type of charge that was stored in amber. Because of these observations, he suggested that there are two types of electrical charges and that these cancelled each other out. By the early 1800s, many scientists were investigating electrical properties. The most famous of these is the American Benjamin Franklin. He did many experiments, including an investigation into the nature of lightning, and he proposed a very interesting theory. He suggested that inside materials, there is a fluid that gives objects their electrical properties. When certain objects were rubbed, they would lose this fluid and become negatively charged like amber. When other objects were rubbed, they would gain this fluid and become positively charged, like glass. But this doesn't fit with what scientists now understand about the atom. Keke, please remind us about a simple model of the atom. This is a simple model of the atom. The central area, or nucleus, of the atom contains subatomic particles called protons and neutrons. Protons are positively charged and neutrons are not charged at all. Electrons take up the rest of the atom's space. These subatomic particles move around the nucleus and are negatively charged. An atom is electrically neutral, which means that it has no overall charge. The number of positive charges and the number of negative charges in an atom are the same because the number of protons equals the number of electrons. Thanks, Keke. Instead of Franklin's idea that a positive fluid moves to charge objects, scientists now think that it is negative electrons which move. Why does this idea fit better with our understanding of the atom, Keke? Well, electrons are found towards the outside of the atom. They can move away from the atom and leave the atom with more positively charged protons than negatively charged electrons. This is what happens when an object is rubbed. Objects that lose electrons become positively charged because they have more positively charged protons in their atoms than negatively charged electrons. Objects that gain electrons become negatively charged because they have more negatively charged electrons in their atoms than positively charged protons. Keke has told us that protons and electrons are charges and an object can be charged and that we can charge an object. That's because even in science the word charge has more than one meaning. The word charge can be a noun which refers to a particle which is electrostatically positive or negative. 
A proton is a positive charge. An electron is a negative charge. An ion with more protons than electrons is also a positive charge. We can also say it is positively charged. And an ion with more electrons than protons is a negative charge. We can also say it is negatively charged. Then we are using the word charge as an adjective. The word charge can describe the charge state of an object. All objects have a charge state. This may be neutral, positively charged or negatively charged. The charge state refers to the balance of protons and electrons in the object. Every object consists of billions of protons and electrons. An object with equal numbers of protons and electrons is neutral. A neutral object can be called uncharged. It has no overall charge. An object with more protons than electrons is positively charged. An object with more electrons than protons is negatively charged. Objects can also have different degrees of charge. For example, an object can be only slightly positively charged or very positively charged. The word charge can also be a verb. A verb is an action word. We can charge objects if we move electrons from one object to another. When we move electrons from a neutral object, the object becomes positively charged. We have charged the object positively. The removed electrons can't disappear they have to go to another object. If a neutral object receives these electrons, it becomes negatively charged. We have charged it negatively. How do we charge objects? A very easy way is to rub two objects together. This is called triboelectric charging. If you lived in a dry area, you should be familiar with triboelectric charging. For example, when you rub your feet against a carpet, you become charged. Then you may get a shock. The shock is a discharge. We discuss discharge in another lesson. Different materials have different properties. Some hold onto the electrons loosely so that we can easily remove the electrons. These materials often become positively charged when they are rubbed. Other materials hold onto the electrons tightly. These materials might be more likely to become negatively charged when they are rubbed. This glass rod holds its electrons more loosely than the cloth it is rubbed with. How will each be charged? Before the two are rubbed together, they are both neutral. Each one has just as many protons as electrons. As the two are rubbed together, electrons move from the glass to the cloth. This leaves the glass with fewer electrons than protons, so it is positively charged. The rubbing gives the cloth more electrons, so it becomes negatively charged. Keke told us that amber becomes negatively charged when it is rubbed with wool. Can you explain why? Now, the next question I want us to investigate is whether or not all objects become charged when they are rubbed. You can do a very simple experiment to try and solve this problem yourselves. Rub a glass rod with a piece of silk and hold it next to some small pieces of paper. What do you observe? Repeat the experiment by rubbing a plastic ruler on a shirt and holding it next to a small piece of paper. Write down your observations again. Now rub a metal rod with a piece of cloth and hold it next to small pieces of paper. Are your results different from when you rub the plastic and the glass rod? Why don't you discuss your observations with some classmates? We found that the glass rod and the plastic ruler become charged when they are rubbed because we observed how they attract small pieces of paper. The metal rod does not become charged when rubbed. Irrespective of the kind of cloth we use, we know this because it doesn't attract the small pieces of paper. Can you explain these observations? Why does the metal not become charged? Now to answer this question, you would have to think about what you know about the properties of metal. You should recall that metals are good conductors of electricity. This means that electrical charges can travel through them. Negatively charged electrons can travel through metals as an electric current when metals are connected into an electric circuit.
Plastic and glass are insulators and do not conduct electricity. This means that electrical charges can't travel through them but remain stationary or static. When a metal rod is rubbed, charges that are transferred can move through the metal rod. The charges move through the rod in order to keep the number of positive and negative charges in the rod in balance. The earth is a source of negatively charged electrons and these may flow between the earth and the metal rod through your body to ensure that the metal rod remains electrically neutral. So the only way to charge a metal rod is to keep it isolated, in other words not in contact with any path to the earth. When an insulator such as a, a glass rod or a plastic ruler is rubbed, the charges remain stationary. They cannot move through the insulator and so there is no movement of charge between the insulator and earth. Okay, let's recap what we've learned so far. Insulators become charged when they are rubbed. Some insulators become negatively charged when electrons are transferred onto the object. Other insulators become positively charged when electrons are transferred off them. The charges on the insulators remain in a fixed position on the surface of the insulator. We say the charges are stationary or static, not able to move. That's why this type of electricity is called static electricity or electrostatics. Metals are conductors of electric charge. They are not able to hold a charge on their surface unless isolated. When charge flows through a metal conductor, we call this type of electricity current electricity. Thanks, Keke. And that brings us to the end of today's lesson. Don't forget to check out other videos in this series, especially the task video. Also, look at the Mindset website at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.